601. Call our meeting in order at 6.01 p.m. Everyone should be aware and recognize that the meeting is being um, recorded. And as a custom of our meeting, I am, for those who don't know, Lenny Singletary. I serve at the pleasure of the board and I am the executive, I'm sorry, I'm the chairperson of um, Community Board 2 and by nature chair of the executive committee. My vice chairs are Leonard Jordan and Barbara Zala Gringer, and our secretary is Jessica Thurston. And so with that, I'll entertain a motion to um, accept the agenda for tonight's, evening, tonight's meeting. Ms. Fiber, second Mr. Meyer. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Um, Third item on the agenda, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from our May 24th meeting? Are there any noted corrections? Barbara? Yeah, I apologize. I didn't get a chance to get them to the office, but I will tomorrow, just a few minor changes. No need to apologize, that's fine. Okay. And for other members, if you have any edits, uh, if you would get them to the office and we'll incorporate those changes as well. Uh, can I have an approval for the minutes from May 24th? Mr. Jordan, second Ms. Fibers. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Um, chairperson's report. So tonight, as it stands at this moment, is our last virtual meeting. Uh, as many of you know, uh, the governor has lifted the emergency order um, on the state of New York which is a very, very, very good thing. So let's, let's, let's be happy about that. As a result, virtual meetings are no longer allowed under the charter and the state charter. So right now, our next meeting is scheduled to be in person. Should that change, we'll adjust and make accommodations accordingly. But as for tonight, um, this is our last virtual meeting. So when I think about where we were a year ago this time and I think it bears repeating. I want to thank personally and probably on behalf of the board, Carol Ann, Taya, and Gustavo for how quickly you were able to get us to a virtual environment and experiencing some of the challenges we had with WebEx, the way you were able to communicate and share information. And now look at where we are, we're now on Zoom. And so um, I think that's as a real challenge for anybody working remotely, new on the job, transitioning, and we're thankful to have uh, Taya's appetite for technology, Carol Ann's steady leadership, and the intellectual knowledge she brings to the job. And so I want to take a moment to thank both of you and Gustavo and the entire team for getting us where we are today. And so what a major accomplishment, duly noted, and you should be thankful and be proud of your accomplishments. So thank you. The next thing I want to mention is um, we have been, the office has been trying to do things in a way that probably is better suited for the community, but also for us. And so in that vein, uh, we have been looking at a couple of things with some of the requirements that we get from the agencies that we partner with or who take our recommendations under advisement, their meeting times the days that the committees meet, and in some cases, the names of the committee. Um, the office and I, we have been looking at um, making some recommended changes. Now, you know my motto, I, I'm all about doing what's best. And so because we've done it in the past, doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it wrong either, but it should give us a chance to really look and see where we can make improvements. And I know that the office and the team have, have done that. And so, Taya, Carol Ann, um, are you prepared this evening to do a quick run through of what some of those proposed changes are? And if not, we can hold it to the next meeting. But I think we had talked about possibly having this evening um, as a chance to maybe give a brief, a brief preview of those changes. So I'll defer to either one of you. I think we're ready to go, right, Taya? Ready and very excited. One second. Take schedules and I'll take committees. Okay. So while, they, while, the, while the team gets ready, 
I just want everybody to keep in mind that these are not changes that are set in stone. This is really meant to, for a, a discussion topic. And at our next meeting, we'll make it an agenda item. I just wanted to take a portion of the chair's report so that you can see some of the suggestions that are being made and we'll look at it at a high level and then go down to some level of granularity at an, another date. But with that, I'll turn it over to Tay and Carol Ann for this portion of the meeting. Okay, so very briefly, if you haven't seen this in a while, this is what the collective uh, schedule of the six working committees and three executive committees looks like today. So just to interpret this for you, um, economic development is on the first Tuesday, Hess is on the first Wednesday, general is on the second Wednesday, et cetera. Um, we have found that there are some really simple changes that we could make to make the schedule um, serve us all a little bit better. Um, of particular note, you'll see that the general meeting is smack in the middle of the month, which yeah. is often before uh, two of the committees are highlighted in green, that's Hess and Land Use, because those are the two committees that tend to produce the most actions for full board vote. So you'll see that the, the coordination of general in the middle is not ideal. You'll also see that the fourth Tuesday is when um, community board recommendations are always due to the LPC. So on the left is the current schedule that you just saw. And on the right is, on the right is a proposed new schedule. And the key points of the new schedule is this. First, the executive committee would be the first meeting each month um, to really hew to the spirit as it's posted on our website that it should be a preview of the month of all of the committee meetings. The general, the, I'm sorry, Ms. Fibish, I'm gonna mute you. Um, general meeting would be the final meeting each month. The general meeting would also be before the fourth Tuesday LPC deadline. And we strongly recommend keeping no Friday meetings for public attendance, but also um, installing no Monday meetings. We find that that is the most frequent date that committee meetings have to be rescheduled for city holidays. Mm -hmm. So the key points on the right side, um, HESS and land use, you'll now see fall, I'm gonna use my, oh, go back. You'll see that my mouse is on land use, falls a full week before the general meeting. So if you see one, two, three, four, five, six, all six of the working committees happen before the general meeting and they are roughly organized in the order of uh, which committees tend to produce the most actions so that we have more time to prepare administratively and also to give you more time to review uh, materials before the meeting. And that is all about the scheduling. Um, Mr. Singletary, we also have slides related to switching to hybrid meetings, but we can pause if you'd like. Yeah, the, the first two pages of your presentation is what I really wanted to share with the exec committee to get the chairs and the co-chairs to start thinking in that manner. The rest of the presentation, I think we'll hold for our next meeting and make it truly an agenda item. But like I said, I wanted everyone to start thinking about the potential dates, the rationale that Taya and Carol Ann really put a lot, and Gustavo put a lot of time into. And then when they shared it with me, you know, I took a deep breath because um, there's some, there could potentially, could, could potentially be some conflicts for me personally with the dates, but I think overall in the spirit of what's better for the community board to respond in a manner that doesn't have us consistently being rushed to meet deadlines, but also gives us a chance to have the exec committee look at the items, give our chance to have the chairs and co-chairs be abreast of what's coming out of the pipe and then work from that way. I think there's a lot of, clearly a lot of thought, a lot of merit and a lot of insight went into uh, the proposal. So again, it was just really for a preview. I'm not looking to have an extensive discussion about it now because I know we will but I'm open to some brief, and when I say brief, no more than three comments from different chief, uh, chairs and co-chairs about the proposal. And we, like I said, we'll have a deeper dive at a later date. Lenny, this is Carlton Gordon. 
All right. Uh, just so this would mean that the decisions we make, at, we'll, we'll keep it on our Wednesday, but the report that we usually give to the executive committee will now go to the whole board and the whole board will decide uh, if what we've done is should be approved and sent, let's say, to Landmarks Preservation or the other agencies that our, our, um, our items have to be sent out to. I think when applicable, that's correct. But, you know, in many cases, we work from a previous month agenda anyway. So a lot of times the items that you have, so if you use um, this agenda, this proposed schedule as an example, generally what you would bring to the exec committee would be what took place in the previous previous meeting. And then what would happen at the HES meeting, given this, this I'm sorry, the land use meeting would be new items, in which case you would right. present them at the next exec committee meeting. This does oh. not suggest, this does not suggest that something would go to the general meeting before it's been reviewed and approved by the exec committee. Huh. Should, All right, right. so you still away. want it? Yeah, you should walk right. away with that impression. Oh, okay, so for the most part, our items will still be going to the executive committee. Correct. Huh. All right. I, uh, so, Mr. I, uh, Mr. Jordan. Although that's, yeah. uh, although again, getting because of the LPC, uh, now will the LPC, you know, the landmarks preservation items, let's say, what can we do a couple in, on that Wednesday, that second Wednesday? Well, then, so here's, what I, here's what I say, because I don't want to, I don't want to, yeah, but that's I, the. I, I, I apologize because I don't, I don't, don't want to overdo it. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to be rude. But what I'll say to you is that the Carol Ann and Taya took thorough consideration into that point that you're about to make. Again, this is a proposal. As right. we really drill down and expand on this, there are things that we're going to catch because, as the chair and co chairs, you know the schedule and the deadlines you have to meet, perhaps the same or with a different level of insight than the office. And so what I'm, what this is meant to do is be collaborative, but also be helpful to the agencies, to the office and to the community. So great comments. Let me, let me pause your thoughts there, table them. We'll come back to All that. Right. And then let me transition to Mr. Jordan. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Singletary, thank you. And a good plan, I like it. Uh, the only thing I was just thinking of, is there anything in our bylaws, I don't think there is, that says that we must have um, a meeting on a certain, like the first week of the month or the second week of the month, anything like that? No? There's nothing, when I last looked at the bylaws as we were preparing for this, there's nothing that says we must have or that anything we have to adhere to. There mm -hmm. are, there's language in there that recommends when we generally meet, but that can be modified, but there's nothing in the parameter, nothing in the bylaws that set guardrails about when we have to meet. Could, could I ask a quick question as well too? Um, I. I just wanted to ask in circumstances like September, where the first day of the month is Wednesday, will the Hess committee meeting be the first week of the month or will it be the second week of the month? Because it says the executive committee meeting is the first meeting of the month, but obviously the first Wednesday will come before the first Tuesday. Mm. So, so you got to table that. That's, that's the deeper discussion. We're going to come back to that. So you got to table that. Because that's the deeper discussion. I'm looking for 10,000 foot questions. <laughs> Barbara? Um, I think overall, this is a terrific proposal for a variety of reasons. Uh, I would just suggest that for purposes of the rest of our lives, the, the sooner we could um, come up with a new schedule, the better, because everything else we do hinges on this. Um, and the other thing is, I was wondering, sort of along the lines that Carlton raised, are there any other issues that have to go to the executive committee before they go to the general meeting? So for the first part of your question, that's why this is high level and we'll answer it at the deeper dive. For the second part of your, your question, we we'll answer it when it's an agenda item and we get to a deeper dive. This is really meant to be a preview. Thank you. Betty, last question, unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, I uh, would suggest or recommend that the office uh, pull the chairs and the um, co-chairs because some people might have you know, specific meetings that they are obligated to on certain days or whatnot and can't change it. 
And then it could lead to a change in who the chair or co-chair would be. So I think it could be polled and then the office could uh, let, let you know what the results are. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. So everyone, again, this is just a preview. I, I encourage everyone to jot down notes, um, put as many post-its on your refrigerator or in your desk, whatever it takes. Um, we, will, we will definitely have a deeper dive uh, around this. There have been some very great preliminary questions tonight that clearly you've seen from the chat or clearly have given us more thought. I just wanted to really put out there and do two things. One, to let you know that we were thinking about this. Two, um, to get your feedback about how this can be more helpful to not only the office, but the community we serve. And then more importantly, um, to be better aligned with some of the agencies that we have to provide information to before a deadline. So Taya, Carol Ann, Gustavo, as always, thank you. I appreciate that. And with that, that concludes um, my chairperson report for this evening. And so we'll move into agenda item number five, uh, items for new business, uh, liquor license application. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brandon Smith. I'm from the chair of the Health, Environment, Social Services Committee. Uh, we don't have a co-chair. Secretary Jessica Thurston is, is on with us here, and she's also secretary of my committee and provides me a great deal of support, as I normally mention. Um, our first item up this evening, uh, I, I learned shortly before the meeting that Hungry Ghost is laid over, so we're not going to be hearing from them. Uh, that brings us down to 294 Livingston Street. Uh, do we have a representative here from 294 Livingston Street? Yeah, I'm here. Great. And do we know between the board office and you whether who will be presenting the application? Nope. Uh, <laughs> friends of the yeah. board office, would, would somebody kindly uh, consider sharing the application? Uh. I've got your application, but um, okay. I figure the rest yeah, yeah. of the committee would like to see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should I explain? Just hold yeah, for it's... one second. Let's see if the board office is, is available and able to present. Taya, Carol Ann, are, are you able to uh, present? I think I hit unmute faster. Um, the applicants typically present their own slides. If that is a problem, let us know. I, it, it seems like the applicant was not aware of how to do that. And I do have the, the application myself, so I can present, but, but whatever, whatever you guys would like to do. Yeah. That, that, that's not the, the virtual meeting format, unfortunately. I Sorry. See. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, it's eight tables. Uh, it says eight on eight. So I just want to uh, yeah, mention that. Right. The name eight. of the place is at Etty, A T T I. Yeah. Right, DBA is a T, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. A T T I. Great. And what's your cross street over on Livingston? Uh, it's a Bond Street. Livingston and Bond. Okay. Yes. Great. Um, if somebody wants to grant me sharing privileges, I can share the application for everybody. Mr. Smith, you have sharing privileges. Great. If you'd like. Or Ms. Church likely has them. But as we go through this and get prepared, I mean, just apologize. This does not take away from the great comments I made earlier about the technology. <laughs> we really come a long way. Just bear with us. And here we are. And so thank you. Okay, I got the application. Um, can everybody see it? Okay? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. All right. So are you are you Mr. O? I'm, I'm Kong, Michael Kong there. Yeah. Mr. Kong. Yes. Wonderful. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about your restaurant and the proposed plan for it? Right. So uh, it's going to be a table barbecue style restaurant. We're going to have, uh, even though it says eight. No. Yeah, excuse me. You can continue, Mr. Kong. Yes, uh, yeah, we're gonna have the uh, table barbecue set up at the uh, restaurant. It's not gonna be too much big space, but then, you know, yeah, uh, fairly uh, enough to accommodate uh, 10, 10 tables, uh, even though it says ten, eight tables. <laughs> and we'll be playing the uh, recorded music of the uh, 
stereos and our hours up of operations will be uh, 11 30 to 11 close but we will have you know last customers coming in around like 10 o'clock or even like, like 9 30 and yeah it used to be a it, you, this space used to be a, a, a coffee and sandwich shop that they were already selling uh, beers previously uh, for the uh, off-premise consumption and yeah we like to serve uh, yeah, cocktails you know, and wines and beers and is there any outdoor seating uh, that like there's not i mean depending on how the neighbor neighboring uh, uh, store uh, can help us but uh, right right in front of us is going to be a, a crosswalk yeah we're kind of like you know uh within the crosswalk line so probably it's going to be a little bit hard for us okay you don't have yeah. to do outdoor seating that's fine uh, yeah <laughs> and the hours are are eleven thirty open to 11 p.m close seven days a week right, right. seven days a week yeah great and when do you yes, plan to open uh about four months later. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, at this point, I'll turn it over to the members of the committee to ask if there are any questions from members of the executive committee. I know it's a noisy uh, intersection, but is music gonna be outside or it's just gonna stay inside? Yes, uh, yeah, that, that is going to be stay inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? I don't see any problems with this. It's fine. Any questions from members of the public or other, or, or, um, uh, other board members who are in attendance at the meeting? I have a question. Uh, is that Betty? It is. Okay, great. I um, couldn't see you, but I could hear you. Go oh, ahead. Am I muted? I'm not, no, no you're not. Oh, okay. okay. Go ahead. So, um, <coughs> Henderson's Korean table barbecue. So how are the fumes from the barbecue, like the smoke? Uh -huh. How are those smokes or fumes like? Oh, delving? okay. Yeah, that's a, yeah, very good question, yeah. Uh, when they're building the, uh, when they're doing the construction of the building, then like, like this is a huge building. They already uh, installed the uh, black iron duct line, which goes to the uh, back of the building. If I see it from the Livingston, and then it runs to the uh, second floor uh, setback area. And yeah, so it duct line is already running on top of that. Uh, because obviously building wants to, and we, you know, we, we want, we also want to maintain the uh, cleanliness and the uh, auto control. We are going to use this uh, precipitator that'll first clean up the grease and the water, and then discharges the uh, fume to the septic area of the building. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for the application? All right, hearing none, I'll ask, do we have a motion for this application? Motion to accept the application, Bill Flournoy. Okay. Second, um, any simultary. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions. Motion carries. Thank you very much, Mr. Kong. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Next up on tonight's agenda, we've got 212 Green Avenue, Place de Fet. Hi, how you doing? I'm Steve Wong. I'm here. Uh, I'm one of the owners of Place de Fet. Great. Um, Mr. Wong, are you planning to present or would you like me to? Uh, I, I will be planning on presenting, but uh, with the sharing privileges, if you want to go ahead and share the application, that works. 
Oh, okay. So you need me to share. That's fine. I'll be happy to do that. I got it up. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, it's nice to meet you all. I'm uh, my name is Steve Wong. I'm uh, actually a resident in the district in Fort Greene. I live down on Lafayette and uh, Claremont. Uh, I am a actually do a few things. I'm a, I'm a fellow at the Working World, a nonprofit that provides investment uh, to uh, employee-owned companies. And I'm also a, an existing restaurant owner. Uh, my partner and I own a restaurant called Oxalis. It's a neighborhood bistro on Washington Avenue. It's actually in the Crown Heights CB8 area. Um, opened, uh, been at it for about four years, uh, and we opened about two years ago over there, uh, a year before the pandemic. And we're actually awarded a Michelin star our first year. Um, this new uh, location on 212 Green Avenue in Bill's spot, um, where the Finch used to be, actually, is going to be a restaurant called Place de Fet. Um, our hope there is to open a restaurant, um, very thoughtful food. Typically, we're a pretty food forward restaurant group, um, somewhat of an elegant dining experience, um, kind of the kind of casual restaurant or wine bar you'd see going into Paris or, or Barcelona or something like that. Um, the hours that we're looking to open are going to be for 10 to midnight. Uh, we are probably look, looking to start at dinner at first, uh, about four. Um, I, I believe our last seating would be around nine, nine thirty. Uh, and we'd be looking for seven days a week. Um, it's a pretty, uh, elegant environment. I would say, I uh, wouldn't expect any loud, uh, any lines or loading. Um, we would have pretty minimal background music, uh, just, uh, recorded music. Uh, and we are not looking at any outdoor space currently. Um, I believe they're looking at 19 tables, like 56 uh, total seats inside. Um, and that's, that's uh, roughly kind of what we're looking at doing. Um, we, uh, yeah, we've been, we've been uh, fairly new restaurateurs. This is our second restaurant. Um, so we've been at it for four years, uh, did pop-ups the first two years. We've been in operation of Washington Avenue for two years now. Um, so, uh, yeah. And then, you know, I'll just add, you know, we did also submit a petition. We spent a good amount of time knocking in doors around the neighborhood, went around the full block in Clifton Grand and Green. And, and it, was, it was really nice to meet over in the neighborhood. Um, you should have that as well. Great. Thank you very much. A um, couple of questions um, off the bat. First of all, what, what is the cross street on Green with this, this uh, app, with this item? It's between uh, Grand and Clifton. And is this on the first floor of a brownstone? That's right. It's right next to the bar called the uh, Izzy Rose, I believe. Okay. Um, just preliminarily, like the folks who live on the, within the brownstone, what kind of communication have you had with them? And uh, uh, have you spoken with all of them? I ha we have spoken with all of them. Uh, that seems to be pretty positive. Um, I know the the tenant right above uh, was uh, was the landlord's son, actually, uh, Alex. It was really nice to meet him, um, but it seemed pretty positive. Okay, that's good. Um, are they aware of the the hours that you're going to twelve midnight? Because that's a little bit later than the Finch. I think the Finch was going to be op was open until like ten or eleven. That's, uh, they, they are, and, and uh, the truth is, you know, I, I think this application, as I understand, it's supposed to be applied for, uh, you know, in terms of when the, before the last guest walks in the door, you know, we would take our last reservation to 9, 9, 15, try to close the kitchen soon after that. Um, this is just accounting if there are additional tables that stay for a little bit longer, um, but certainly we would not be looking at taking any guests after 9.30 or so. Okay. Well, could just you give us a sense as to what these private events are that you're going to be holding? It says that there are going to be four of them per year. Just in case there are uh, kind of a cocktail party in the back of the, uh, the back, there is a section that could be pretty well utilized for private events uh, for a small group, probably I'd say somewhere maximum, probably 12 to 18 guests. Uh, so something like that uh, at our company at Oxalis and Washington Avenue, we have also thrown a good portion of fundraisers. Usually it would be something we do once or twice a year, uh, generally for causes. We, we raised funds for RAICES, a uh, legal um, organization in Texas, for example, when they started introducing stronger border rules. Um, we also do monthly fundraisers uh, for Brooklyn Movement Center. It's a nonprofit based in Crown Heights and Bed-Stuy that provides services. So we do a good amount of fundraisers. Um, so I would expect probably one or two years, something like that as well. Okay. 
Well, um, just for clarity, are these going to be events that you'll be hosting yourself, or they, the question was really about renting whether they would be they it would be renting it out to a third party, and if you are going to be renting out to a third party, what kind of presence will you have there in in order to monitor the the third party's adherence with the the terms of the license? Yeah, uh, I would, you know, it might happen where we might rent it for a full event for dinner for a company or something like that. We'd always maintain full staffing for the events, however. Okay. Um, I've got uh, 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. seven days a week for the for the indoor and no outdoor seating. That's correct. That's right. Okay. 56 seats indoors. Okay. Um, questions from members of the committee. Yeah, Brandon, this is Bill Fenoy. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I was looking at the map. This is in a brownstone in the middle of the block. Is that correct? That's right. That seems to be Okay. Correct. Is there a residence above the restaurant and residences on either side? That's right. Uh, no, on one side is a bar, above is a restaurant, and there's a residence on the other side as well. Okay. And you're going to be open until 12 a.m.? That's right. We'll have seating inside. Uh, I, we, I'd expect the last guest at our current restaurant, we take reservations up to nine. It's a little bit of a longer dining experience because it's eight courses, but typically everyone's out of the restaurant by 1130. Um, so, but I, I think for this concept, uh, you know, the guests would probably be in for about hour, hour and a half. So it might be till 11 or so, but um, you know, you never want to have to kick somebody out. Understood. Having uh, a nice dinner. No, I understand. Uh, I currently live in a residential area, mixed use also, and there is a bar below me. And one of the things that tends to occur is that after the bar closes, people tend to hang around the area. Uh, if you're open till 12 o'clock and it's a residential area, I, I don't know if that might be something that might be a problematic for the residents, especially if there's a brownstones and there's residents just above you. In yeah, you know, we are fairly quiet and we try to get out as soon as possible. We're, we're very concept driven restaurant, very food driven. So, you know, they're very long hours over here preparing the food and the beverage and things like that. Um, you know, in our conversations with the residents, we certainly, uh, you know, had no major issues uh, with the neighbors. Uh, the gentleman next door said he, you know, there, there's windows looking into his yard. He said that, you know, we, he'd love us to figure out a way to put some blinds up that were more substantial than what the Finch had. And we're happy to do that. Um, that seems like a pretty easy um, way to support him. Uh, and then, you know, I, in my conversations with the people around uh, across the street, on our side of the street, uh, the main concerns, you know, that the, the thought was really that 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 bar next door uh, was was pretty loud and, and open till two or three. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think we'd be even close to, to that level of noise or hours. Okay. How is parking in the area? Just out of curiosity. It's OK. Uh, you know, the you know, it's it's mostly all residential alternate side parking. Um, you know, it's. Uh, Lafayette, I would say there's a good amount of movement just a north, uh, just a block north of there, um, and it always seems to be pretty accessible. Sure. What's the, the, the next there, door there, bar? There, there is that. It's a uh, Izzy Rose. Izzy Rose. Um, okay. the, there is a large parking garage in the Key Foods where the Starbucks is, right on Lafayette and Grand as well. Okay. Right. Jessica, yeah, sure. you, can, can I just get Jessica to jump in? I'll come back to you, Bill. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Brandon. Um, yeah, Steve, uh, this this sounds great um, to me, and I just wanted to comment. This has no bearing on your application, but we do just like to recommend hiring locally as much as possible. We have a lot of pockets of long term unemployment in our district, um, mm -hmm. and there are a few um, organizations that we work with in the district um, that could help you post for jobs and just let us know if you need that information. We always um, also direct folks to um, the Navy Yard. You can advertise and there's some community centers. So please just keep that in mind as you are building out your staff. 
we would love to do that. Uh, you know, that's something that's very important to us. It's been very important to us at Oxalis as well to try to find people in the community. Uh, we typically spend a, a lot of our resources and training as well. So we, we try to make an environment where people can learn. And, you know, fortunately, I, we, I, we, we are very proud of the work we do. And we think it's a great landing place to kind of build a resume to really go anywhere else too. So, you know, I, I we would love that. Um, you know, uh, any restaurant will tell you uh, that, Hiring is challenging and we would love mm -hmm. any, you know, support in terms of getting in touch with people in the community. That would mean a lot to us. Fantastic. Yeah, we will follow up. Thank you. Hi, it's Dorothea. Um, I just want to know, maybe I missed it, but what type of cuisine is going to be served? Yeah, it's a, it'll be very seasonal French, I would say. Um, it's going to be kind of smaller plates. There might be kind of, I would say, typically somewhat European, French, Spanish. There might be some conservas and uh, raw and cured fish and things like that. Um, but there will be a full menu as well of salads. And if anyone's been to the, the, the a la carte area in Oxalis, um, we kind of ran a test trial of it uh, in, in summer when there was outdoor dining during COVID last year. So kind of smaller, very, very seasonal plates. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you. Bill, did you want to make a further point? Oh, no, just beat me to the punch. <laughs> OK, great, great, excellent. Any other questions from members of the committee? Any questions from members of the public or other board members who are here tonight? Great. Um, does anybody want to make a motion on this application? Colton Gordon, move to approve. Okay. Is there second. a second? Second. Who is the second? Sorry. Sid. Sid. Okay, great. Discussion on the motion. I, I'll just offer that I, I saw that the next door location, Izzy Rose, is open until 2 a.m. seven days a week. Um, any other discussion on the motion? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Abstention. If you're opposed or abstaining for any of these applications, folks, just if you could use your voice, uh, possibly. I just I might not see all the squares, but it sounds like this is unanimously approved. Thanks, Jessica. I'll try to go through it a little bit more deliberatively. Um, no, that's fine. Okay, this motion is approved then. And thank you very much and good luck. Thank you so much. Uh, this brings us to our last new application of the evening. 117-119 Court Street, Taqueria El Pastor and Bar. Do we have somebody here from that location? Yes, good evening, Mr. Smith. Uh, Brian McCaffrey. Um, uh, Mr. Smith, I'd ask you, I, I, I have the application, but I'm not that savvy as pulling it up, but I know that was going to be expected. I greatly appreciate it. If you could share it on the screen, please. I can. And then I have, uh, thank you. And I have Mr. Um, Pablo Aguilar uh, right to my left, who's uh, going to uh, give the presentation. Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Pablo Aguilar. I'm going to be uh, one of the managers at this location. And what we pretty much bring into the uh, community, it's uh, very authentic Mexican, almost like a fast paced casual, which will be very simple. Uh, tacos, quesadilla is pretty much kind of like what we eat back home. And we'd like to bring that into this neighborhood. Uh, we're looking to pretty much operate anywhere from um, 11 to midnight. Everything's going to be fresh as much as we can. We're looking to have 10 tables and 10 seats at a bar. We also thinking about bringing bar, uh, you know, bar food, bar snacks, as well as, you know, drinks, beer, micheladas and margaritas. And as far as pretty much on uh, the, the uh, pretty much the whole uh, ambience is gonna be pre-recorded. We're gonna be very uh, low acoustic. We're thinking about even doing a little bit of sample because we are aware that there's a residential area on top of us. And we're still pretty much waiting on the permits for the construction to be, you know, to get to us. 
and we pretty much we pretty much bring in kind of like a touch of Mexico to to pretty much uh, Barham Hill. Okay. Great, thanks. And this is Court Street, and what's the cross? Is it is it Skimmerhorn or or uh, no, it's state. state state state? Okay, Court Street. Right. right across from the uh, the cinema. And you said you have residents above, but isn't the street kind of like a mixed use commercial district kind of area? It is. Yes, okay. it is. Great. Um, and in terms of hours, we're going 11 a.m. to midnight, seven days a week, and th there's no outdoor seating at this location. No, not, a, not, not at the moment, not, not at all. Okay. Great. Um, any questions from the members of the committee? Yeah, I have a question. Is this between State and Skirmerhorn on court? And no, we are on Court Street and State, right in the corner. It used to be uh, called Theo, uh, Theo Poyo. Oh, okay. That, I think the, that is technically space. between yeah. State and, and, and Skirmahorn. But it's but right it was, on it's State. It's right on it's the right corner, on yeah. Okay. Yes. Wonderful to have something there. Thank you. Yes, and absolutely. And just throw it out there. I actually happen to also manage another location in the, uh, like in the area. It's on Court Street and Kane Street. It's called uh, Kitchen at Cabo Hill. And that's a little bit more of a farm to table with a twist of Mediterranean influence. And so far we've been, we've been there for 11 years, especially now that what just happened, we were able to stay afloat. And this is actually kind of like my other project on the side that we'll actually will be able to put my hands on and still, you know, have and be part of the community for a long time to come. What kind of conversations have you had with the residents upstairs? Uh, so far, nothing, because right now we're still in the construction. We're still waiting for the permits. Okay. Um, Mr. Smith? Mr. Just, Jordan, go ahead. Yeah, I just had a question about the music. I, I think he mentioned it, but I, maybe I didn't catch it. Uh, it's going to be recorded music. Recorded inside, right? Yeah. yeah correct. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. Any other questions from members of the committee? Uh, this is Bill Flannoy. Just uh, again, to repeat, we'd like to see you hire locally if that's at all possible. Absolutely. Well, we actually, um, like I said, we're going to be a very uh, authentic, casual, fast environment. So we're not going to have like waiters. We literally just going to have someone to just go around and clean almost like a, a bus boy. And then of course, you know, cooks and uh, bartenders as well. And I'll be pretty much one of the main guys doing the hiring and, and absolutely, I will definitely, you know, keep that in mind as much as, you know, I'll try to help the community as much as I can. Any other questions from members of the committee or members of the, uh, of the community or other board members? Uh I, I think this sounds like a great project, but is there a concern that they don't seem to have reached out to any of the, you know, the local people to find out um, about their concerns, if any? Well, I mean, as far as, uh, yeah, I mean, right. This uh, very, uh, like I said, there's still a project that's still on, on the works, it's still developing, but uh, I really wanted to get, you know, a head start just to pretty much uh, get myself covered. But like I said, uh, we pretty much bring in something new to the area, the which- Notices were posted on the doors. Oh, because yeah, we actually, we posted the notice and everything. So there will be pretty much something happening. And like I said, we're looking to open anywhere from November to probably October. Any other questions for the applicants? Yes, yeah, so hi, this is Lenny Brandon. <clears throat> I, I guess maybe, and you can advise me on whether what's customary for the committee, because I don't want to do anything that's not customary, but how do you approve an application if there's no opportunity to get feedback from the community? And while I appreciate that the applicant is getting ahead of uh, and doing the right thing at all accounts, he 
um, and the team know what to do. They've done it well. It's demonstrated in their other um, locations. And if I was going just off my gut, I would say, you know what? It makes sense. But absent of that, how do we make the decision on what the community thinks without any feedback? Well, if the question is for me, it is for you, then the answer is it depends upon the facts and circumstances of each application. Certainly, when you look at certain red flags that we and in accordance with the guidance that we put together as a committee previously, we're going to take a look at the hours and in line with what we've deemed to be certain red flags and consider whether or not there's the potential for impact when we don't have any com community members actually coming to the meeting and saying anything. TOPO, uh, which I believe th this was the prior location, right? This is TOPO? Correct. Yes. According to what it says on the web, this closed at 4 p.m. I mean, it seems like it's pri primarily a lunch place. And we're looking Correct. at a we're looking at a place that's proposing to go until midnight every night. And we have to operate under the assumption that the, the people up upstairs may have had an opportunity to see what was posted in the, in, in the front of the store, but they may not have had an opportunity to, to see that and they may not know. So we have to try to think about what's reasonable in that regard and something that we could probably pick up in our, in our discussion once a motion is made. And, and excuse me, but Mr. Singletary, Mr. Smith, I just want to point out that we posted it not just on, on the door of the premises, but on, on several neighbors' doors. And, and, I, and we posted it with, with the link for this meeting in case they wanted to join and, and say something. All right. Can I make a motion to, to, uh, uh, to postpone this for one month and give people more chance to reach month? Brandon, I, Brandon, I'm not sure if you were looking for a second, but I second that motion. Okay. Any discussion on the on on this motion? Uh, this is Bill Flanoy. Excuse me, one second. May I interject? Sorry. Go ahead. But, um, I just want to remind the committee um, and to the applicants: this is not the committee that regularly reviews these applications, but we suspended petitioning until the end of the pandemic season. And so um, the chair and I did speak about that, the committee chair, and we said we will restart that requirement in September. So um, committee chair talked about um, looking for red flags and their guidelines and most of the, the they've, they've been around long enough to, to really pick up on things that um, stand out that could potentially be a problem like outdoor space going till two, three, four in the morning. And this application sort of lacks that. Um, so I'll turn it back over to the executive committee. Let me say why I wouldn't, you know, because in this the location used to close early, like around five, I really would like to give the people a little more time to absorb that it's going to be staying home, open till midnight. And, and I think a one month uh, adjournment is not gonna make a major difference. Okay, one more time, let me go, please. <laughs> okay, Brendan, uh, the location of this uh, particular restaurant, it's a pretty active street with, uh, across the street you have the movie theater and also there's a, a well-traveled roadway and there's always activity there. Um, I think based on all the activity that has been going around that area, I think the, the tenants, uh, the residents in the area are used to a lot of activity, both from the movie theater and also from other locations. So I don't think this would be an issue because they're closing at 12. Okay. This is Carlton, I have to agree with Bill. I walked through it, especially on my way going to the uh, key food over in Atlantic and I've passed the TUPO. There's always people there at that going up and down Court Street constantly uh, hitting restaurants and he said the movie theaters and all the other the liquor stores just a couple of uh, doors away uh, people always going in and out of there it's it's a location that's I think people who are there know that this is a busy busy location and it's not meant to be you know, let's say a quiet Bourne Hill type of uh, street this is a very busy downtown block yeah this is Jessica just from my experience in the committee, I, I think it would be unfair 
for us to apply a different rubric because you know this is not the committee that typically reviews these applications and in the HES committee to Carol Ann's point we have suspended this requirement so I do I don't think it's just for us to apply a more difficult screening to this applicant because they happen to come before our executive committee tonight and I think that it's not for us to say that one month isn't a big deal to a small business. I think of one month is a huge deal. And I feel very strongly that we should disapprove this motion. And um, I would be then happy to make a second motion to approve this application. I'll be happy to withdraw the motion. So I, I have a question. I have a question. Um, I was wondering if the district office looked into whether there have been any complaints about the kitchen? About T.O.P.O.? No, the kitchen. The restaurant in Cobble Hill. Their other, their other restaurant. That's oh, not. Okay. That's oh, not no, we're, 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 uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, it's a different. It's it's a different. They're not. They're not. They're not together. It's a different uh, entity. It's a different venue. It's different owners. Different everything. I just happen to manage for both. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought there was the same owners. No, okay. no, no, no. It's not the same owners. So, Mr. Smith, can I make a comment? Sure. So, part of why I asked the question, because I am not familiar with the protocol of the committee. And so, as an exec committee, we can only respond with the information that's presented before us. But I, I go back to something I thought I understood the applicant to state is that, that part of why they have not received uh, feedback from the residents directly is because they're still in the construction phase, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. So if I may, how much longer will it take for you to complete that construction phase? If you had to ask like, I, like I said, we're pretty much looking at uh, about another two months. We literally have very, very little things to touch on. And then from there, we should, like I said, we should be looking to open anywhere from October to November. Okay. So if it's going to take you another two months to complete construction, then what's the harm in the motion that's on the floor? to give another month just to get some feedback from the community. Don't get me wrong. If, if there was a situation where the construction was complete and it was an apples to apples in the application of what the community has recommended, I would not try to make any supportive motion to the motion that was made to, to treat this applicant uniquely or unfairly, depending on your view. But given that's gonna take another two months and then to get another month to get to ensure that we have community feedback, I'm just seeing where the disconnect is, or maybe I'm unique in that in that position. Do we know what month that this is going before the SLA, or is, is scheduled to go before the SLA? I would think that would be uh, um, important consideration. Carol Ann, would you know that? Um, I, I I don't know. I, they probably haven't, and they can speak to whether or not. Um, 30 days have expired since we've received the notice because they are not allowed to submit before that time. Um, but what I, uh, an application can take a while to make it through the system. So that I can say. Okay. Well, right now, um, having heard all of those things, we've got a motion on the table to table this for a month. Um, Mr. Meyer, do you wish to make any changes to your motion? I'd leave it and let's see what the vote is. Okay. Can I just ask the applicants um, how, how, um, how um, stuck are you on the 12 o'clock close time? Are you amenable to changing that any or? No, not at all. We're sticking to pretty much what we submitted. Uh, okay. Pretty much we've been thinking about like if uh, business starts to slow down, we're thinking about even to pretty much start serving like around 1130 in order for us to actually give us, you know, a you know window for us to kind of like, you know, clean and make sure to live everything up until the next day. Right. Well, I can just say it's it's usually not our our practice to approve a closing time that is eight hours after the closing time of the prior restaurant. 
when the applicant hasn't spoken to any of the residents in in the building um, at all. Uh, that that that's just not a situation that's happened with us previously. So, um, I, I I recognize that it, it's not so so late for a business, but just you know you never know who the person is who's going to be on the second floor of your building and. Um, in normal times, we do encourage folks to go out and, and, and speak to residents and try to um, get uh, awareness of the fact that you're going to be putting a, a liquor license establishment in there that's going to be open until midnight. Um, Me, then again, I'm sorry to interrupt, but then again, we have already posted our uh, operation hours and everything, not only in front of the, of the actual venue, but then around the entire block, because we do happen to be in the corner. Okay. Well, I, 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 I got you in that regard. Uh, it's just, you, you know, not everybody may have seen that. And with that, with that in mind, eight hours is a pretty big difference. You know, we don't see that pretty much every day. And granted, 4 p.m. is a rather early closing time. But, um, you know, I think if, if this were something that we saw in committee, you know, it might be a situation where we might recommend uh, a little bit earlier of a closing time, like, I don't know, maybe 10 p.m. Or, or so until you have an opportunity to speak with the neighbors and then come back at, at, at once you've had that opportunity and maybe we'll consider your application for 12 a.m. But at least from what I understand, and you're free to tell me whatever you want, you know, if you're if you feel like you want to stick with a 12, 12 a.m. closing time seven days a week and have us take it or leave it, then that's that's fine. I mean, we're willing to pretty much work with the community. Like I said, we're pretty much kind of like the new kid on the block. I don't want to, we don't want to upset nobody. Like I said, we're pretty much trying to just be people as much as we can. And like I said, that's pretty much what we're looking for at 12 a.m. But if you guys actually give us the liberty to start at 10 and then, you know, let us prove that we're just, you know, there to pretty much cater to, to, to the community. And if you guys let us and give us the opportunity to stay up until midnight, that will be very, very, very helpful for us and for the community as well, we'll probably okay. say. Especially there, since we have the uh, cinema right across the street. I mean, we do want to kind of like feed those people before the show or not even after the show because I know the movies go a little bit later than that. Okay. Well, with that in mind, um, do you, is there any challenge on your end to come back in a month or so to our committee or it, would that be an imposition on, on your, your business? No, not plans? at all. Like, Okay. Not at all. Like I said, uh, we are very open. Like I said, we very new to the uh, to the community. Like I said, we're willing to work with 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 the community itself. Okay. Excuse me, Mrs. Thank you, uh, Brandon. Okay. Uh, can I ask one? Thank you very much for the input. I just want to curious. When did you post? How long ago did you post uh, that you were you were going to come to the committee? We, we did that on last Tuesday. We put the notices around. And again, I, and I did make sure they had this link so I didn't want it to appear. And, uh, and so Mr. Smith, I was just going to ask, um, you, know, uh, you know, the one month doesn't sound so harsh, but I was concerned. I think in one of the emails to the community board, they said you'll be close, you won't be having uh, these meetings for July and August. Is that right? Well, go ahead, Mr. Singletary. Yeah, uh, so that's our wish to be able to have uh, July and August off, not gonna happen. We'll, we'll, we'll probably have either July or a meeting in August. I think the hope is that we, if we do, maybe we have a meeting in July and therefore we would have August off, but inevitably something always comes up that requires us to meet one of the months. So um, even if you, even if you, you know, we postponed it a month, we would um, have you come back and briefly state your case and we would vote or we would do it in August, um, all well before you have an anticipated opening. If we um, approve this motion to uh, delay it, is, would it be appropriate for us to give any suggestions for how they might reach out to the community? Well, well it's, it seems like they're doing that now. I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. No, go ahead. It, 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 it seems it, it seems like they will, but you know, I, I, I think generally speaking, you probably have a landlord at that building that you can speak to and they, they might be able to help you with get in touch with the people who are inside the building, um, at least getting the, the message out there. 
and you know other folks that we deal with go up and knock on doors I, you know different buildings work in different ways so you have to kind of find the best approach to work with the the people in 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 your building but hopefully you'll get that opportunity now that we're moving into uh, uh, a more um, open uh, time period okay so we have the motion on the table. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Just to confirm this is Sid's motion to postpone, right? Right. This is a motion to postpone by 30 days, come back in the month of July and, uh, and uh, consider the, the motion again at that point with a suggestion that, uh, and Sid, correct me if I'm wrong, with the suggestion that the, the applicants uh, engage in outreach with uh, people in the building. Correct. Okay. All right. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion. Opposed? And speak, speak if you're opposed. I think it might just Daughtry. No, I'm with you. Oh, Daughtry. there's just one vote per committee, Daughtry. Oh, sorry. So I appreciate right, it. Yeah. I got it, don't you? <laughs> That's yeah. what astronaut explaining. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. Gordon, are you opposed or you approve? No, no opposition. Okay. And abstain? Does anybody abstain? I got it. Okay. Um, it looks like nobody abstains. So we had one opposed, everybody else in favor, and the motion yep. carries. Excellent. Well, good luck and we'll see you in 30 days. That concludes the new business. Well, wait, 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 we have renewals. Um, Ms. Church, we've got some renewals and normally our practice in this area is to inquire, have there been any concerns from the community expressed about any of these listed renewals? 216 Duffield, 148 Hoyt, 142 Smith, 145 Atlantic, 232 Vanderbilt, 132 Montague, and 651 Fulton. Something tells me we might have something for 216 Duffield, Duffield do we? Yes, we do. Um, about two years ago, we started receiving complaints about rooftop parties at uh, 216 Duffield, we did reach out to them. I, I won't say the matter was completely resolved um, satisfactor, satisfactorily, but it, we haven't received complaints for a while, obviously over the last year and a half, there, there would not have been much activity, but I have noted in my travels around town that they're again having parties on the rooftop, which they're allowed to do, but we have not received any additional complaints. Okay. Um, did you receive any complaints or concerns about any of the other uh, renewals? None. Okay. I'd suggest we have a separate motion and discussion for the other uh, renewals and um, a, a separate discussion about 216 Duffield. Is that okay with you, Mr. Singletary? Yeah, yes, it is. I make a motion that we actually set aside the one and approve the others. Second it. Second it. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstention. Okay. All right. 216 Duffield. Um, I should ask, do, do we have any, any, anyone from the public who came to the meeting tonight that wanted to speak about this application? Hey, Mr. Smith, can I ask a question? Sure, you can. Uh, did we approve the renewals for the others yet? We did. Or did we? Okay, we did that with that vote. So we're okay. just down, yeah, we're just down to 216 Duffield. Okay, okay. Now, how long is the renewal for? Two years. That's what I thought, yeah. 
two years. Can, can we can we ask them that they renew it for only for only one? No. Okay. Thank you. This is Dorothea. I have a question. Carol Ann said that there were complaints a couple of years ago. There have not been any complaints recently, even though they are now using the rooftop. So why even go through this if you've had no complaints? You, you're basing it on past performances, which should have nothing to do with what's going on today. Carol Ann, do we know how recent the complaints are? I, I, I got the opinion that they were recent. So, so I, I try to only talk about complaints that would have come between the last renewal and the current renewal. Um, so we sort of lost a year and a half because of COVID. So there's that lag, but prior to that, um, with, within that short period, there had been some complaints and that's why I mentioned it. You know, the, the, the management said they would change the direction of their speakers, that sort of thing, but we're not really sure how much it was resolved. So couldn't all of this have been uh, asked before uh, bringing it up for renewal so that you wouldn't have to go through this now? I just, like I said, everything was shut down for a very long time. And uh, naturally you would not have the same amount of complaints because nobody was going anywhere or doing anything. So now we're making a decision. Well, I can't vote, but there's still a decision being made on something that happened a year and a half ago. And I just want to know, to me, I don't think that's um, the correct way to go about doing business. Well, to clarify, there's no motion on the floor yet. So no, okay. no one has actually made a motion to disapprove this application. But if you'd like to okay. make a motion to approve it, or if someone yeah. would, we can we can take a motion. Just uh, just Church, one point what? of clarification is that the SLA is not going to not renew this license based on our vote. This motion, the, if, if if the committee decides that they would not like to have this application go forward directly, what it would be would be a letter from from the board saying we we are not satisfied with the manner in which this licensee operates it will we will not be able to pull the license based on this vote and 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 you know given the given the fact that you know we've had the covid if if problems come up there'll be a renewal in two years i mean it's not like it's giving a five or ten year license so I'll make the motion to approve the renewal. Okay, do we have a second on Sid's motion? We have a motion to second approve. From second. second from Carlton. Yeah. Discussion on the motion. Uh, Ms. Church. Okay. Sir. Uh, on the complaints that they had prior to COVID, what was the response to those complaints? Um, there was some acknowledgement that yes, they could have been, they could have been creating a disturbances. I don't know that the response at the time was, um, what's the word I want? <laughs> um, I, I don't know that the response was <laughs> what, what, for me, what would have been ideal in terms of addressing it. Um, however, they did say they would change the speakers around, they would uh, put in volume controls, I believe. But again, we haven't had that tested because of the last year and a half. Oh, sorry, Ms. Church may ask, how many complaints were there between the last application renewal? There were some consistent complaints within the period of time um, from, um, residents in uh, the towers close by. Um, I can't tell you there were 20 complaints, but there were definitely at least four. Okay. Uh, over a certain time period or all at the same time, like in one week or? Over all, no, o o over a, a, a couple of months. A couple of months, there were continuous complaints. There were about four complaints. 
from two different buildings. One more question for you, Ms. Church. Did we, did we invite them to come to this meeting or did we not? We did not. Okay. Any other thoughts from the discussion? Yeah, the, the SLA is not going to non-renew based on something that occurred a year and a half ago. There's got to be some, mm -hmm. you know, continuous kind of thing that of recent origin. I mean, they, they, they just don't do that. I mean, they, they have to have facts and basis. We don't have the facts and basis right now. What we've got is we have a couple of complaints, a, a number of complaints from a year and a half ago, and that's not going to stop them from getting a renewal. Oh, has to be. And uh, Carol Ann, the, the complaints we had were noise complaints? Okay. So it's got to be more than just noise. Otherwise, I was going to suggest we put this one over for a month and invite them to come in. But if the, it's just about noise, then that's not going to make any difference. Any other thoughts from the for the discussion, or shall we vote on the motion? Vote on the motion. Okay. Um, all in favor? Opposed? And again, please say that you're opposed. I, uh, I see you, Bill. Bill. Okay. You. And abstentions. I, I abstain. Okay. Um, motion carries. So we can move on to our next item of business. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate your leadership on this. Next committee um, for new business is land use. Okay, Lenny. Thank you. Well, we have a couple of Landmark Preservation Commission applications. Uh, the first one is, just give me a second, I'm a little dry. Should have gotten a drink from you, Brandon. Uh, 174 Bergen Street in Borham Hill. And what they're looking for is they have existing double hung uh, single glass windows that they want to re replace. Basically, they want to put uh, in front, it's going to be on the front facade, and they want to put new double hung uh, windows, uh, double glazed, uh, insulated with aluminum, yeah, aluminum windows. Uh, this is on the, um, it's on right on Bergen in, in Bourne Hill, and it's between Hoyt and Bond, and it's a, just by the whole block is basically townhouse, brownstone, whatever you want to call it. Old, the old fashioned houses. Uh, I guess, do we have the uh, presenter? Yes, hello. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. And give us your name and your uh, affiliation. Hi, my name is Michael Scaduto. I am the architect for the homeowner, Stephanie Trudeau, who is also, um, I believe, uh, one of the participants here. Yeah, she's online. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. You can uh, proceed. Yes. So we are. Um, I, I did send a, a PDF of a presentation, but I don't think it's necessary. Uh, but I'm happy to share my screen if you'd like to see it, or if you guys could pull it up. Um, uh, but if you can share, if you can do it, it'd be nice just to get a, a nice look at it. Let's see. I can do that. Um, not seeing if you can't the, for some reason, you know. I'm not seeing the option to share my screen. I don't know if it's the way okay, I'm connected. Yeah. Okay, just do the best you can. Yes. Um, so we are proposing to replace the front windows, um, which are a mixture of um, multi-pane windows for the most part. Uh, some wood, some are aluminum replacements that were done um, sometime in the 80s, we believe. And um, per the 1940s tax photo, the, the windows at that time were, um, were two over two windows. So uh, two side-by-side -side panes of glass, um, double hung. So four panes in total. And our proposal is to uh, replace with um, similar styled windows with a, with a divided light with a muntin down the middle, but out of aluminum. Um, and the reason we want to aluminum windows is because they are um, better insulating than wood windows and significantly more affordable. And uh, per landmark suggestion, the, they will have a wooden brick mold, which is the piece of 
of trim that goes around the outside of the window between the window itself and the, the masonry, the, the brick and brownstone of the facade. And that, um, so that, that will be a historically accurate wooden trim piece and the, um, the muntin that, that will actually divide the, the lights in the middle will go inside the glass and on the front and the out and the inside so that it will look uh, like a true divided light um, while being a modern insulated window. Okay, um, what what coloration are the uh, the frame will the frames be? Uh, they'll be black, which matches the existing windows and the front door of the house and the cast iron railing on the stoop. Yeah, good. All right. Oh, I see. We have something here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So basically, we are. If you look on that slide that you're on now, on the left hand side is the tax photo. The right hand side is what's there now and our, our goal is to uh, have as close as possible the look of the 1940 tax photo but with a modern window but, but you know modern insulated technology as opposed to single pane glass okay uh, do we have any questions from yeah, yeah. Any it's Sid I, I yes, want to hi, Sid. Yeah, I go ahead. Uh, first of all that's across the street from my house Oh. Second of all, if you, you see the blue car that's in the uh, uh, 2020, <laughs> that's my car. <laughs> now, uh, so I spoke with the Boreham Hill Association about this, and, and we're supportive of the, uh, of the uh, both myself and the Boreham Hill, so I'm a board member, are supportive of this. The, the, you know, the, on the block, it's really, uh, the windows have become not very standard, and, and this is actually the the land, I, I did some looking up. This is what the landmarks requires. They look at the 1940 uh, uh, photo and they require that they put back the windows with uh, uh, the, the two, because I, I have I have six over six here, because that was what landmarks required when I updated my windows. But this is what the landmarks require. And the Board Hill Association is, 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 support, is supporting the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the proposed change. Okay, Mr. good Gordon, to hear from you. Yes. Can I Go make ahead. a motion to approve the, as presented? Second. Okay. Okay, we move and second. Do we have any uh, comments from any of the other committee members? If not, actually, I'll do it the other way around. Do we have any opposition to the motion? Okay, we have none and no uh, abstentions. So now we'll go to support. Who supports the motion? I'll raise my hand. Two, three, four, five. I guess it's a, uh, I guess we have, well, five, was it six, seven? We have nine. But yeah, I think, nine? I okay, think Jessica so got, like, that, got that covered. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you got the numbers. Okay, so it's nine. Okay, yes, we have nine, zero, zero. Okay, you have it, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate no. your time. Thank you. No problem. Bye-bye. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to the next one, which is in Clinton Hill, and that's at 122 Gates Avenue. Uh, this one is they want to do a full width uh, ex extension at the rear, uh, at the garden level, and at the parlor floors. Uh, and it will be bricked, will be matching the existing uh, facade, and it'll be the windows will be on the second floor. Will be changed. Will be changed for access to the roof. There's a roof deck. Uh, it'll be painted steel deck, uh, stairs, and there'll be stairs to the yard. Uh, insulate, yeah, yeah, and installed at the parlor floor level. Um, since this is a going to be a uh, extension, first before we go any further, and uh, the person is there. Uh, the presenter is have you spoken the present have the applicants spoken at, or contacted the neighbors and if so how you've done it and have you heard back from the neighbors yes hi uh this is william augustino hi everybody Hello. Uh, i'm the architect uh my partner is also here on chubangia hi and uh the owner of the house uh mr jacob hudson is also here uh, and I think uh, he has notified notified the neighbors. He could speak to that 
Uh, yes, tell us how you uh, notified the neighbors, because that's very important since you're going into, into the backyards and it could affect the backyards of the of the neighboring buildings. Yep. Uh, first of all, thank, thank you for your time and consideration. Um, I've spoken to uh, both neighbors on both sides of the house, one uh, 24 and 126 neighbors for nine years now and have a pretty good relationship uh, with both of them. I've spoken to them in person, uh, described the project in detail, uh, described the construction process or anticipated construction process uh, in detail. Um, neither of them expressed uh, concern. I think one of them is actually pleased about it because it's going to give them more privacy on their deck. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, I think we'll, we'll, we'll continue the conversations. I we finalize sort of the plans. We're trying to time everything so that uh, the disturbance to their yards for the construction process occurs uh, in as short a time as possible and during the late fall, early winter months. So it's at a point in time when they don't want to be uh, in their backyards or back deck anyway. We're trying to time everything around that. Um, and uh, I would say they're generally uh, supportive. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, so just you know, give us the details of your uh, application. Or sure. You, uh, you or the architect, whoever, which one? I can go ahead and do that. Uh, should I? Can I share my screen? Please. Okay, is that working? I see it. So uh, yes, uh, we are doing the full width rear yard extension, garden and parlor floors to match the rear uh, facade. Uh, here we have a block plan, which uh, we're showing that there are a number of existing two-story and three-story extensions in the block between Grant, <laughs> Gates, Cambridge, and Fulton. Those Could you put your cursor over your build, the building in your yeah. So that's the uh, 122 Gates in which means it's the dark blue. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, the proposal is that with the dark blue, and then the light blue volumes are three existing three-story extensions. Uh, the green are two-story extensions. Purple are one-story. Uh, all of these are visible from Cambridge, as is uh, our new extension as well. There's also an existing extension that was already approved recently at 404 Grand Street. It's a four-story extension, plus a two-story, plus a deck. Decks are all shown in yellow. This is also helpful to see. It's a three-dimensional view of that end of the block. Our proposed extension is the dark blue. It's two stories. There are existing three-story extensions on either side. Uh, one is on the end here at 118 gates, and then there's 126 gates, which is also a three-story extension, but it's really a little bit taller than the existing building. 404 Grand is the previously approved four-story extension plus two-story. That's visible also from Cambridge. All of these are visible from Cambridge. This is another view of the block. That's the proposed extension of 122 gates. The yellow are uh, existing deck, decks and our proposed deck. So this is the rear facade of the building in the middle here. There is an existing wood deck that will be removed. Uh, the neighbor on uh, the 120 has an existing wood deck. I think this might be the neighbor that Jake was referring to that's going to have a little more privacy on the deck. And then on the ends of the block, and of this row, not of the block, this is the end of the block. Uh, there's the 118 with the three-story extension plus railing. And then 126 has a three-story extension, which is actually a little bit higher uh, than the existing building. This is the proposed elevation that shows the proposed two-story extension with brick to match the existing rear facade, uh, steel windows and doors with painted steel deck and stair down to the yard. At the upper area, we're keeping 
all of the existing windows on the third floor. On the second floor, we're keeping two existing windows and changing the central one to a door for access to the a new roof terrace that's going to be on top of the extension. If approved, how long do you think the construction, how, how long will the work take? I think that would approximately. be uh, approximately a, a year, a little bit more than a year. But it's not just the extension, it's also- There's a full renovation of the interior as well. Uh, inside as well. Yeah. That's the full project. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Sorry, that's not the, that's not the time period for the extension. Yeah. The, uh, so here are some, uh, the par partial plans. This is showing the existing deck that will be removed. Then we have uh, the new proposed extension at 11 foot seven with a steel deck off of that stair down. This is the plan at the new roof terrace with uh, steel railing all around and access to the middle uh, with the new door. These are sections that show the blue dotted line is the existing uh, extension on at 118 gates. This is our new extension, which is one story shorter and is approximately the same depth as the other extension. And then this is that much taller one at 126, the line of that. This is the view from Cambridge into the block the tall extension on the end, 118, with uh, steel railing. And then you see beyond here is the 126 extension. And they also have a two-story extension that's visible here. This is the view when it was autumn, the, tre the trees now you can't, you know, it's much more obstructed uh, with all of the foliage on the trees, but this is a good view uh, during winter and autumn. This is 122 here where we're proposing the extension. This is a rendering. Put your cursor on that again, just to... Uh, so that... Yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah so okay. that's the 122. Okay. That's the new extension. I see that you do it. Okay, yes. Thank yeah, you. So there's a little rendering there that shows... Yeah. The, mm -hmm. uh, so again, two stories uh, in comparison to this taller extension. And then we're also using a steel railing at the top. And the windows at the top are visible as continuous, and then also here, continuous. I have this a question. Montage. Yeah, sorry. The, the extension- Okay, go ahead, Barbara. The thank you. The proposed extension at 122 compared to the one at 118, because, you know, from this picture, it looks like the 122 does not extend out as far as the 118. Whereas the other picture, it looked like it did. So I just wanted to clarify. I think it, it will come out approximately the same depth as 118. Our, our extension is 11 foot seven. And I believe 118, 118 is, is, is approximately about yeah, 12 feet or so. Thank you. So uh, very close to the same. Mr. Gordon? Just yes, go ahead. Um, is that Daughtry? Um, yeah. Yes, thanks. Thank you. Okay. Um, it's related to Barbara's question, which is um, how much uh, rear yard it remains, including the deck, and then also not including the deck. I can't tell how deep your lot is. Sure, sure. So the whole entire lot, I believe, is 100 feet. And there's 45 foot left of rear yard after the extension. And then the deck is nine feet. So 36, 36 feet yeah, of yard right. after the deck. The deck is also, you can see the deck here in the rendering. So will the deck extend beyond the, um, the, the other building? Beyond this building? Yes. Yes, but they also have a steel deck off of their building. So oh. I think it will extend beyond that. Okay, thank you. And you can see the neighbor's wood deck here too is also starting at the end of the of the extension of 122. Thank you. Are there any other questions from committee members? Uh, Mr. Gordon, this is Bill. Yes, Perron. go ahead, Bill. Yeah. I'm just kind of curious. Uh, the deck, the color of the deck, the color of the back of the building, 
Uh, what's the color in the materials? They're going to be dark. It's a, a landmark approved a dark black color charcoal. And the bricks also, we're going to very carefully choose them so that they match the existing rear brick, rear facade. Uh, I also wanted to mention, I didn't get to at the end, is that we did actually meet last week with uh, neighborhood organization representatives uh, last Wednesday, uh, Ms. Sinisi of CRNP and uh, Ms. Hubainer of the Four Green Association. <clears throat> And we didn't get to meet with uh, Sharon Barnes, but she also provided her feedback to them at the meeting. And uh, they did actually, we had a nice long meeting. We talked about the railing. They, they made a recommendation of the railing and we incorporated that for this presentation. And uh, then they also let us know that they're sending a letter to the committee uh, with their support uh, for approval of the project. I don't know if somebody received that letter. Uh, no, I didn't see it, but I'll take your word for it. He'll probably okay. get. He'll probably get to the board office in due time. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments from uh, committee members? I just, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I have, I have just some comments, um, and those yeah, on my ahead. my committee understand um, these. I don't believe that additions to landmarked buildings need to match in any way. As a matter of fact, I think LPC agrees that the, the, it support more strongly supports the original building when they actually stand apart from it. So I'm a little confused by your, your um, use of carefully matched brick um, of the extension and the very super modern large opening on the back. So that's just a, a quick comment. And the other comment that I had is that I would be considering this differently if the neighbor on the corner actually, if if the if the structures on the block actually wrapped around and this visibility wasn't so clear. But this extension is, I don't care that it's been done before. I'm just, I'm noting that it's highly visible from the street. And I think that um, it's something to think about um, here. Yes, uh, I think the brick, the choice of brick is also something that uh, is, we're considering as a nice material as well for the neighbors, you know, the, the, we're, we're our view of it, rather than seeing a stucco box or a stucco wall over here. Uh, sometimes also that's sort of an inexpensive route to take for a sidewall, and then you spend the money on the end and do the brick. Uh, we decided that we wanted to go with the brick on all three on all three faces so that it does match closer to the existing and provides a nice backdrop for the deck and a nice view because this is really the the public view of that extension. Uh, the owner really is going to see it mostly from their rear yard and then that would end up looking nice together with the with the original main house. The dog tree, the reason why I asked that was because it was so visible. Traditionally, if it wasn't so visible, I wouldn't care. But because it is so visible, that's why I asked that question. And do we have any other questions or comments? If not, I'd like to get a motion. Motion to approve Bill Flanoy. Okay, that's Bill Flanoy. Do we have a second? Second. That's uh, Lenny? Singletary, yep. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Any questions or comments on the uh, motion? Okay, hearing none. First, I'll ask if there is any opposition to the motion as presented. You have to speak up just so uh, Jessica will know. Okay, I hear no opposition. Do we have any uh, abstentions? I hear no abstentions. All right, so I guess we'll raise our hand to see how many uh, are approved, moved to on the motion. Jessica, is that everybody? I actually just count the other two. I think we're good. <laughs> we're good? All right. So it's, uh, we'll take it as nine zero then. Approved. Okay, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Okay. Thank you.
Uh, again, oh, I should have noted at the start of my presentation or my section that Daughtry is one of our co-chairs, Daughtry Kostarfin, and also I don't know if uh, Irene she made is. it today. She's on. Yeah, she's, she's on. in. All right, hi Irene, and uh, just to say we have another our other co-chair, so we should know we're really working hard on this stuff. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Carlton. Okay. Uh, then the item number six: committees for action. I see health, environment, and social services. Back to me again. Um, boy, it's been a, I've been looking forward to this night. I, I got, a, I got a lot on the agenda and, and we had a, uh, we, we had a very robust meeting at the beginning of this month because there were, there were points of lengthy discussion and this is a four hour meeting condensed into a, um, a short presentation. So I'm, I'm going to hit it and uh, appreciate any comments, but you know, also keep in mind our committee put a lot of time into this, the, these discussions. So uh, what do we got first? 673 Atlantic Avenue. Um, this is our, uh, a new application. Let me pull this one up. Um, this one actually isn't so new. Uh, this application was one that came before us in late 2020. Uh, it's for a place called the Simpson Restaurant and Bar. It's on Atlantic Avenue across from the Barclays Center, um, pretty much across the street on Atlantic on the other side of the street from the Barclays Center. And basically they've been operating um, and they, uh, they last came before us in 2020. Uh, they ha have, they want to in increase the closing hours from 12 midnight to 2 a.m. Uh, the uh, there is no outdoor seating at the location. Uh, they have a private dining room and and they, it's a family oriented restaurant with soul food, Caribbean American food. Um, they their goal is to capture the Barclays Center crowd because sometimes the game lets out late. Uh, we asked if there have been any issues or any incidents while they've been in uh, in service, and they they they've had no complaints even from um, surrounding neighbors. Uh, they indicated they do last call at 1 a.m. And upon hearing these things, our committee uh, voted and supported this one six zero zero. This was one of the the, the shorter items of the evening. Um, then we proceeded on to 37 Cranberry Street, right in the middle of Brooklyn Heights. You might remember that there was a bar there called Jack the Horse in, in, the, in the past. And uh, this is uh, aiming to be what they call a neighborhood clubhouse. It's going to be a, a, a restaurant, um, but um, also a venue that's going to hold some uh, private events. Uh, they, they're going to have hours of 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. indoors, and they're going to have outdoor seating uh, on the, the sidewalk of their location. They originally proposed it until 11 p.m. We did not have any opposition from any community member for this, but in keeping with trying to be fair with all applications and, and the kind of neighborhood it is, which is a very residential neighborhood, we felt it was appropriate to uh, condense the 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 outdoor seating hours from 11 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Sunday to Thursday, which is uh, what we ultimately agreed upon in our final vote. We voted uh, 8 0, 0 in favor of this application. And uh, they spoke about a commitment to local hiring. And it, it was, uh, and like I said, there was no neighbor opposition to that one. Um, Next, we moved along to 275 Park Avenue. 275 Park Avenue is a big residential building that's down right on the other side of the BQE. And we recently, I, last year, disapproved an application in a different part of the same building that was related to a fitness center where they had had fires and floods and, and a ton of issues prior to uh, approaching us for the liquor license. It's a completely separate venue and the other side of the building. This, the, the fellow who's opening it is a uh, performance artist and he uh, it wants to open a, a, a comedy club slash jazz club that's going to operate from uh, 12 noon to 2 a.m. 
uh, every day, no outdoor seating. Um, and uh, they, they, they have uh, considerable soundproofing that they spoke about putting in place. Uh, he, the, the, the uh, applicant spoke about having uh, interacted with residents who were excited for the space to, to come. At the same time, we had received probably eight or nine um, uh, letters of opposition to this uh, application from different residents where literally the same text was copy pasted on like all of the, the letters of opposition, but still it was genuinely expressing concern about the potential for noise coming from um, a venue that, uh, that and, and as well as people being let out late at night um, at, from the from the venue, and while the applicant uh, had spoken about his op experiences of being positive, there was one one resident who showed up to our meeting and expressed concerns about having the venue inside of the uh, of the apartment building, as well as having multiple shows uh, per night, which was the, the the plan for this for this location. So we had a, a long discussion about whether the applicant should have a more fulsome meeting with the, the, the residents of the apartment complex, um, whether they should come back in September or whether they should, we should go forward with even proceeding with a vote on, on the application. And after a, a lot of discussion and after the applicants agreed to reduce the hours on, on Sunday to Thursday to 12 midnight as opposed to 2 a.m. Uh, we took a, um, we, we, we made a motion to approve 701 on the condition that the applicants meet with the residents of the building and come back to our committee in the fall to give us a progress update on, on how things are going between them. And um, at the end of the discussion, the, the, uh, the resident thanked us and he, he didn't seem like he was necessarily um, uh, completely in favor of the, of the outcome, but at the same time, he didn't see opposed to, seem opposed to it either. So that was the, the outcome on that one and uh, we'll, uh, move on to the next one here. Next, we have 104 112 Bond Street, CK Hudson LLC. You might remember this as the location formerly known as Building on Bond, on the corner of Bond and uh, uh, Pacific. And this location is going to be coffee, tea, small bites. Uh, they want to do hours of 8 a.m. to 12 a.m. Sunday to Wednesday, uh, 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. Thursday, 8 a.m. 2 a.m. Friday and Saturday. And they had originally proposed a rather late uh, closing time, but I it predates my involvement in the committee, but it's, it's pretty much known with our committee that one of the most um, uh, in, one of the most involved and populated meetings in our history was the one where Building on Bond came several years ago to introduce their outdoor seating. And having, and having uh, not had substantial uh, chance to speak with the neighbors around the area, we felt it was only fair for this uh, applicant to go with the same outdoor seating hours the building on bond had, which was a close of 10.30 p.m. And the applicant agreed to that. So we did 10 30, we're, we're doing 10.30 p.m. Uh, every day of the week outdoors. Um, they agreed to hire locally. Um, they are going to have a DJ uh, with, um, with uh, acoustic live music. Um, and uh, that we, we had no complaints or, or anyone from the neighborhood who showed up to speak against this application. And we also noted that um, building on bond when it was there also had really late hours until um, well after midnight, as well as even the experience of having a DJ there present. And 
um, given all things considered and the limited outdoor seating, we, we felt it was fair to uh, approve this one by a margin of seven zero zero. Um, next, we moved along to a location on in Dumbo called uh, Cali Canuck. Uh, this is located at 41 Washington Street. And this application was previously heard by our committee in December of 2017, at which time we had voted to approve it. Because of COVID, they didn't really get the chance to start up their business and their, uh, app, their, their SLA license expired. So they had to raise the same application all over again. And this is what we were seeing here was the same application they raised to us in December, 2017, same hours, same conditions, same everything. Um, the, uh, the location is serving uh, kind of a new American style of cuisine, uh, 12 a.m. closing Monday to Wednesday, 2 a.m. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And um, the, uh, they're, they're, the applicant is a 15 year resident of the com community in, Dem in Dumbo and wants to serve the crowds, wants to serve people who are looking for something to eat later at night, um, thus the hours. Um, one of our board members, Ms. Quint was at the meeting and expressed concerns about the location on Washington Street, how there are so many people who are on that street taking photos and using the street all day during the, the daytime and was concerned about the late hours that we had, uh, that the applicant had uh, 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 back from back in 2017, as well as, uh, as still present. Um, but uh, our committee ultimately voted in favor of this application by a margin of seven to zero to zero. Um, and I would note there are a, a, a quite a few other uh, at, there are quite a few other establishments open around this time and later in the immediate vicinity of this uh, uh, this this at, this location. In addition to a different location that this applicant currently maintains, the Archway Cafe, where he has a two a.m. closing time seven days a week. Um, Ms. Quint did express some concerns and wants the committee to consider this separately once we decide to take a vote on it. Um, whether we do is up to our committee, but I, I want to make sure that her request is honored. And um, that, that's it for this application. Uh, finally, we've got 55 Water Street. This is the Empire Stores location. And I want you to think about the side that's facing Brooklyn Bridge Park here. Um, this is a this is going to be a restaurant with a with an outdoor location. Uh, it's going to feature a Michelin star chef. Uh, we don't know which one yet. Um, it formerly was called Sugarcane, and um, the indoor and outdoor hours are were were offered to go by to till two a.m. Um, there. It, there are going to be private events. There's going to be a DJ, live music, and, and dancing. There weren't any residents that were close to this uh, to this particular establishment because it's facing the park and the water. Um, I, I expressed some concerns about the outdoor hours at this location, um, and the applicant agreed to change the hours for on Sunday to Wednesday from 2 a.m. to 1 a.m. on the outdoor seating, uh, but it's still 2 a.m. on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, with all of those things considered, the motion was approved for this application by a margin of 6-0-2. Um, I was one of the two abstentions, uh, but there was nobody opposed on that. And that concludes each of our new applications that we heard at committee. And I will mention, we did have a robust, lengthy discussion about one of our renewals, but I don't see that on our agenda for tonight's meeting. So it's up to um, the it's up to you, I guess, Mr. Singletary, if you want to to, to hear or consider anything about that. But um, I I'll be happy to answer any questions at this point. So, um, Carol Ann, is there is there a need? 
to address the last point made by Mr. Smith, or was it intentional just to include these items on the committees for action? I think that was inadvertently um, left out. Okay, so um, Brandon, can you give us some context for the last point? Yes, absolutely. I just feel like it was it's fair to discuss because we had a neighbor who was here in opposition to one of the uh, renewal applications. Um, 181 Smith Street is a locate is is known as Black Forest. It's on uh, Smith Street and um, I want to say the cross street is about at Bergen, but it may be a little bit south of that. Um, the uh, uh, this is a location that operates as sort of a German uh, food uh, place with a beer garden out back. And the when the application first came to us, there were a substantial number of community members who were concerned not about the not about the restaurant, but about the backyard area and its potential for noise with this, I remember them describing as a unique pocket of sound. And uh, the, so when the applicant first opened a few years ago, there was no backyard seating. Then after the applicant had made uh, acquaintance with the community and had been in place for uh, about a year, they came back to us and requested the opportunity to have outdoor seating. There was substantial community concern about this and the applicant spent probably 10 to $15,000 creating soundproofing on the backyard of his, uh, of his uh, uh, beer garden uh, to make these booths that prohibit the sound from moving up and around and um, from the point where he opened until the point of our committee meeting, which is probably about a year. Would that be fair, Carol Ann? Okay, she's nodding yes. Um, the, um, there, pretty much all of the community concerns went away except for one person. And this one person is the apartment that lives directly next to the backyard of the beer garden and this person um, was the, the, the fellow who came to our meeting and was concerned about the continued operation of the uh, backyard in a manner that was causing a lot of noise because he's got like the first floor apartment that is right next to the backyard. So we had a long discussion with this uh, resident as well as with the owner of the, uh, of the establishment and it was literally getting to be about 10 o'clock at night when we were uh, having this because we'd had so many other long discussions at this committee meeting um, but what it ultimately boiled down to was in the back of this backyard there is a hedge that is right between the backyard and the guy's apartment and there's a table that's in the backyard too and we agreed with the applicant that either remove the table that's back there or put in some additional soundproofing where that hedge is currently. And this will be a scenario that would be acceptable for moving forward for us as a committee. The, the resident was still somewhat concerned, but we, we tried many different suggestions and including trying to suggest mediation, which was not agreeable to the, the the, uh, the parties. And uh, at the end of it, um, it seemed to be that it was a solution that gave a little bit to both sides and we voted to approve it by a margin of five, zero, one. Uh, the rest of the renewal applications we approved as there were no complaints. I'll just say, Brandon, that's a tricky oh, location. Oh, hold, hold on. Let, let me let me do this in a more orderly fashion. So okay. let me call on Barbara because she had a hand up. So Barbara. All okay. right. Thank you. Uh, the, the two um, restaurants that have DJs, were the DJ, the sound from the DJs limited to the inside of the restaurants? Uh, let me go back to my notes. I know that's the case that's for the bond, building on Bond Street replacement. Uh, is definitely going to be inside the restaurant. And yes, it was going to be the case for the 55 Water Street as well, too. All right. So, yeah. so we have assurances that you won't hear that music outside. 
Yeah. Well, we we have assurances that the the, the that it's not going to be a it, it's not going to be a concern for anybody outside. I can't remember the specific statement that okay. was made at the committee, but I, I think that was the general gist of what was 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 discussed and and oh. agreed upon. I and I certainly uh, remember that the committee and um, was was concerned about those both of those points. Okay, thank you, Brandon, and thank you, Carol Ann. Mr. Gordon. Yes, I just wanted to point out. I'm sure Brandon knows that that on the Bergen and Smith location, that it, it is a tricky location to try to do, to, you know, to try to do something because not only do you have the, it's this location of the F and G Bergen Street station. You have the B65 bus, I think, makes that turn there. And you have commercials, loads of commercials along those boats. I think some commercials on the Bergen side, a load of commercials on the uh, Smith side, and people are living on top of these uh, commercial units as well. So it's such a difficult location to try, you know, you. I think that whoever can do the best they can do, they can do it. But just bear in mind, there is so much that goes on at that particular intersection. Ms. Thurston. I'd like to make a motion to approve all the recommendations from the committee. Second. I'll second it. Any, any, um, any discussion on the motion, Mr. Fornoy? Yes, uh, the committee, I recall, asked that uh, 41 Washington be excluded from a general motion and have a discussion on that separately. Um, that, that wasn't my request. That was Ms. Quint's request. Ms. And, Quint's request. And it, it's fair if anybody wants to take that up. Um, I, I, I don't have a problem with whatever the rest of the committee would like to do in that regard. I'll accept but, a friendly amendment if someone wants to, but- Wait, I, wait, wait, I, I'm sorry. Hold, hold on one second. So the committee is not here. It's right. the exec committee, one. Mm -hmm. Number two, Ms. Quint's not here to make this argument. Right. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure why we would treat this differently. Why to bring it to the attention, that's all. Uh, all right. The one thing I, w I was interested in is Empire Stores. Are there residences above no. restaurants? No, there are not. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Anyone opposed, speak up, please. Anyone abstaining, speak up, please. Thank you. Uh, next committee for action, Parks and Recreation. Uh, good evening. We only have one uh, proposal to vote on, not a dozen. Um, um, my co-chair, I don't think he's here tonight, Andrew Lastowecki. And just briefly before we, we got to the, uh, while at the same meeting, we did have a lovely presentation bringing us up to date on what's going on on Governor's Island. Turning to Kyler Gore Park, um, the com Commissioner Marty Marr introduced the design for the 5.6 million redo of the park. This design, which involves upgrading the entire park, reflects the recommendations presented at the scoping session that was held several months ago. The design involves new landscaping, new shortened fences on the outside, new security lighting, more inviting entrances to the park, the replacement of 20-year-old playground equipment with new equipment geared by age for younger children and then for older children. There'll be new seating, new pathways, and a performance area. The upgrades will ease accessibility to the park, address existing irregular surfaces, and the lack of uniform retaining walls for the trees in the park. The um, at the scoping session, uh, people were extremely concerned about the trees, that they provide lovely shade. And um, only a couple of trees will be removed in order to incorporate the new design. Uh, the park is named for Dr. Theodore Ledger Kyler, uh, who led the Park Presbyterian Church and was an avid abolitionist. In fact, I was looking at the information about him online and he specifically declined a statue of himself to be erected in the park at the time. And there will be a um, there will be information in the park about him and his work. The um, 
the uh, the the committee uh, approve this seven zero zero. I'll entertain a motion to accept the committee's recommendation. Ms. Thurston, second Ms. Fibers. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Uh, opposed, please speak up. Abstentions, please speak up. So move, thank you. Thank you. Next committee is Transportation and Public Safety. Good evening. This is the first. This was the first uh, meet, committee meeting that I chair, and we had a very lively uh, meeting. We had three children from uh, PS 309, 307, excuse me, who presented on York Street uh, Station asking for better access. And, and even though there's not, it's not on the committee uh, uh, report for tonight for action. I recommend that you listen to them on the. Uh, recording that was made, and uh, hopefully that we'll see some uh, progress in getting a second entrance and a much more uh, acceptable, uh, accessible first entrance. We had the two uh, uh, action. Uh, the first one is the street street installation at Albee Square. Uh, the reason why this came before the committee because under Open Streets they've been approving these. Administratively, this is a no parking, no standing street on the right hand side, as you can see from the picture. And that because it is such a no parking, no standing, it requires special approval. The, uh, uh, the uh, request was made by the Downtown Brooklyn Partnership. Uh, the one on the, uh, the second picture there shows a typical uh, installation. This is, if you show the first picture, if you scroll back up, that's it, stop there. This will be on the right hand, not, not, a little further up. Up, not down, up. <laughs> they, uh, come down just a little bit. That, stop there. It will be on the right hand side or uh, opposite the, uh, the entrance to City Point. And in fact, it's already been installed, all right? Just so you know, the way Department of Transportation works is that they come for our approval and they go ahead and do it. Uh, what it's being used as now, it's being used as a lot of people are waiting for uh, uh, ta taxis or Ubers or Lyfts to come pick them up. Uh, there is a, uh, a restaurant across the street, but the restaurant does not uh, do uh, uh, does not do street service, but people can take do takeout and come sit and use the space. Uh, the time when I was there, which was on uh, last Saturday, it was being used fairly extensively and uh, people were enjoying it. Uh, the committee wrote, vote, voted 7-0-0 to accept the Department of Transportation a recommendation and the, uh, and, the, and the request for the street seats installation at Albee Square. Do you want to, anyone want to make a motion to approve? Well, hold on, so you're going to do these, you, you have two action items. All right, you want me to go to the second item? Yeah, if you would, please. Uh, obviously, I think they should be voted on separately, but we'll. The second thing is a protected bike lane at Navy Street uh, between Sands and Flushing. Uh, this had previously come to the board in June of, I think, 2020, and we had sent it back because we wanted additional input from uh, the Farragut houses and the other housing project that's located there. It's a one a block installation on Navy Street going towards Sand. What the city, what DOT uh, has proposed, if you scroll down, you can see it better. They've proposed a two, by, two lane bike lane on the uh, west side of the street with a uh, uh, a a a here you can see this is what this is the current what currently exists there they show in green how the bikes go down the west side of the street go to the center and a lot of the bikes the twists um, go to the the east side of the street no excuse me the, it's not, that's the east side of the street 
go to the west side of the street to make a illegal or unpermitted bike turn because that's the easiest for them. If you go further down, please, scroll down, please. Just further down. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, uh, that's what they're proposing. They're proposing a, a protect the bike lane that will be protected by a crosshatch uh, safety zone, a two-way bike lane, uh, and and a removal of the parking lane that's there. If you go if you go down further, there's a schematic showing that better. Scroll down further, further. Further, further, they don't have, they didn't show that. All right. Keep scroll up. Maybe they'll show the, uh, they hit the uh, existing. Mr. Meyer, just in the interest of right time, are you able to summarize the opposite, why the vote was in opposition? The the three people, the, there were three people up. What, 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 uh, let, let me finish going through the presentation. I mean, you know, I think it's important to hear the whole presentation. All right. You can see here's the existing, it shows a parking lane, a five foot, uh, uh, bicycle lane, an 11 foot travel lane, a turning lane, a 10 foot uh, travel lane, a five foot southbound bike lane and a parking lane. What they propose is a two foot, uh, a north and southbound two foot, four foot uh, bike lane on the uh, east side of the street, a, a, a protected, a two, just a cross hatch protection, an 11 foot travel lane, a safety zone in the middle with a turning lane, eleven percent parking, and a five-foot uh, uh, southbound bike lane and the seven-foot parking lane. What the committee voted for was to uh, object to the DOT unless they next to where the two. Way, the two-way bike lane is that they would uh, reinstate the parking lane to protect the bicycle the bicyclists, remove the five-foot southbound uh, second uh, second bike lane, and return and 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 build by the two the two north and southbound bike lane, uh, and uh, with with the protection plus a bike lane, a parking lane next to the, uh, um, to, the to the back, to the north and southbound bike lane. And, and as I said, remove uh, and, and two 10 foot uh, travel lanes, all right? Uh, there were people from the Farragut community who objected to the removal of the parking the three people who voted for this, and I don't want to speak necessarily for them, but what they said was that this has been going on long enough and that that uh, uh, we should approve what the DOT has, has presented. The committee voted uh, six to three to object unless they made the change to, to reinstate the parking, protect the bicyclists with a uh, uh, just like they do on, on Prospect Park West. That's how the people in Prospect Park West are protected on that bike lane by a line of, of, uh, of park cars that will protect the bicyclists in a, be in a much better way. And the, as I said, the committee voted six to three to object unless that was done. Thank you, Sid. So we're gonna, we're gonna vote on two separate items. I just wanted to share to give this complete report. And so let me start with um, street seats installation at Albee Square. I'll entertain a motion to accept the committee's recommendation. Move to approve. Mr. Carlin, second, Ms. Fibers. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mr. Fulner? I'm just kind of curious. Um, what's the, right now you have, you're going to have parking on one side, you're going to have the, uh, the, the one, uh, De development on the other side. What's going to be the clearance for cars to go down the road? On, on the other side, actually, it's no parking on the other side too. It's just there. It's parking. It's picked up. It's a whole bunch of other things. It's not a park. It's not a. It's not a parking lot. There's plenty. There's plenty of room. All right. Okay. Okay. In the image you showed, there was parking. That's why I asked. No, no, but there's plenty of people stop there to go in, and run in and out of the Target into a City Point. 
It's a state. Uh, people use it as a standing area. Right? It's a standing area. Okay, it's, but, it's, but there's still plenty. There, if there's more than enough room, unless they double park, it actually had to be triple park. As I said, I was there on Saturday. It okay, was no, clear. It was not a fine. problem at all. Okay. You answered the question, I, Sid. <laughs> uh, Ms. Thurston. You want to? You want a full answer? I'll give you. Ms. Thurston. I just wanted to call the question. All in favor? Opposed, please speak up. Abstentions, please speak up. So moved, thank you. I'll entertain a motion to accept the committee's recommendation for the protective bike lane at Navy between Sands and Fulton. Mr. No, Gordon. 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 I, I accept the motion of the committee. Second, Mr. Gordon, any discussion on the motion? Ms. Barbara Zalagrana. Thank you. Uh, could we look at that picture again? I, I didn't, there's that, the, the proposed um, scenario has this three foot, uh, um, right, this three foot area between the two bike lanes and the travel lane. And I, I wasn't, is that going to be uh, the proposal that that would be a barrier of some sort, that three foot? No, it's 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 just a a cross. It's a it's a cross hatched. Uh, the original proposal by the city, not the one that the committee approved. The committee wants that to be a a a parking lane, a parking lane to protect the bicyclists. The right, city, but the, if the we city, look at the if we look at that picture before yeah. where it says proposed, I'm. So, I'm sorry. That, can I can I interrupt for one second? Can we put the slide on page seven and leave it there for a minute? Okay, yeah, let's leave it on page seven. Thank you. Um, the word says proposed. I'm assuming that's what the city is proposing, not Correct. the committee. Okay, so I was just wondering why, two things, what that three foot area is, if that's just a barrier of some part kind. And then if you have two lanes on one side, why do you need another bike lane mm -hmm. on the other side? Well, that's what, that's what the committee First of all, it's only, it's all, all it is, is a cross hatched white painted protection. It's, but the, it's but nothing, that, no, bar, no, no barrier, no barrier, okay. no barrier. All right. And what the committee proposed is that we don't need, if you're building a two lane north and southbound bike lane, you don't also need a five foot southbound bike lane on the other side. And if you, remove that and you take one foot from the travel lane from both travel lanes, just like they have now, it allows for seven feet to have a parking lane next to the bike lane to protect the bicycles. Thank you. I have a quick comment, Lenny, if I may. I'm sorry, what was the question? I didn't hear that. Oh, sorry, it's Jessica. I just wanted to ask a quick question. Oh, sure, go ahead. Uh, I just, I hope we can move this along quickly. And I apologize, you know, there's a lot of folks that have thoughts. We don't typically um, have public comment at this point, but I just want to say, I think it's really silly and embarrassing for us to not support bike lanes. Um, this is really obvious. Climate change is real. We need more bike lanes. This also makes for a safer turn. It reduces turning conflicts at the intersection for over 4,000 people who bike on this block every single day, removes the conflict in the right turn at Sands and Navy. And um, I just think we absolutely need to be in favor of <laughs> a bike lane. Um, so I will be voting against the motion and hope others will support me. Okay, I, I've not, I've I'm, never- I'm sorry, Sid, I- I'm, 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 I, I've never voted against a bike lane, not one. And we had lots of people from the community who came and spoke, all right? And they were very clear that they want to maintain the parking. And Sid, this I'm hearing people in the community that know that parking is not important in 2021 when we have climate change. I think it's really silly to prioritize parking over a bike lane. That's my comment. Well, in all due respect to you. So wait, I'm sorry, hold on. We're not going back hold on, court. hold on, stop. I'm, give me a second. Jessica made her comments. That's it. Said so you get to make your comments. We're not going to do back and forth. Right. Okay, just one point, 16% of the people who live within that census zone own cars. Any any other discussion on the motion? Can I say something, please? This is Latrell. 
Uh, Latrell, unfortunately, this is what we, we leave this portion of the meeting to exec committee members. I'm sorry. Given that, given that you're a board member and you live in the community, I'm happy to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Um, the community is not against bikes. We want to protect the bikers, we, but we also need the parking spaces. We want to have protected biker lanes, but also the parking spaces to, to be there for the community. We're, they're losing more, more than 14 parking spaces. But we want, there should be a way, the way they have coming down flushing, and as you turn, there should be, there's, there's enough room on the street that you can have a protective bike lane and also the parking spaces. So we're not against bikes. We don't, we don't feel that bikers should not be protected. One of the members of the community wrote in this morning about, um, about the bike lanes and how it, the traffic and how the back lanes cannot get through the middle of Sand Street coming down. It, it, was, it was a blockage. If I know Sid seeing and the executive board, I assume she wrote a letter saying, we're, we're, we're for bikes and we're for the safety of bikes. All right. We're also for the community also. And this is a community and we also have parking spaces with Dumbo, with the NYPD, with the NYPD training station. We share, the whole community, our other communities come, they park, they day park in the community. We have two schools that we need parking spaces for the teachers who travel from outside of the community. So we're, we we want we would like to figure out a way that we can have both together. All right, thank you, Latrell, I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Howell, as a, another board member, uh, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to make a comment as well. I think you had your hand raised. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I mean, I. I understand that this is about 14 parking spots being, you know, taken away to create a bike lane. And, you know, that can't be, you know, ignored. There are people who get use out of these parking spots, but the question isn't whether, you know, everyone can get what they, you know, want. And when people, not every need can be met by the city, the city has to prioritize. And those 14 parking spots must be very important to the people who use them. But there are parking spots across the street. There's a parking lot across the street. The 4,000 people who bike through that intersection need protection. The DOT planner who presented the project told us that this one block is in the 10% of most dangerous streets in Brooklyn. Five people were uh, seriously injured between 2012 and 2017. The, the point of this project is safety. Okay. And I know that people you know, have cars and they need to be able to park, but we don't subject safety to votes any other time. Why now? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Howell. Mr. Flanoy? Yes, uh, I've been told over and over again, the work is done in the committee. I'm sure this discussion happened in the committee back and forth, and this was the recommendation from the committee. I don't think we should do the committee's work again in the executive committee basically supporting what the committee's uh, proposed because that's what the committee proposed. I'm sure they had this discussion at the committee. Any other discussion on the motion? Yes, this is John Dew. Um, without getting into a lot of history, we've had these issues with DOT and bike, lane, bike lanes, community district two for decades because we were the first community board to install bike lanes. All bike lanes lead to the bridges. The two biggest, bu busiest bridges are downtown Brooklyn within Community Board 2. We have more bike lanes in Community Board 2 than any other community board last time I checked. We have a formula with DOT that has been in place for two decades. It says you can put in bike lanes whenever, as long as you do not remove parking. This is a community board. The community board reacted to the community. That is what we are supposed to do. That is what we have always done. You don't allow DOT to come in and do whatever they want because DOT is a person and that person made the decision without consulting the community. This goes back two years when DOT came to us and we did not vote on it because we were told to not vote on it. It is now what DOT presented back then 
has not changed. The reaction you got from Luttrell is what is speaking for the Farragut community, and thankfully the community board heard Farragut. DOT can go forward with their bike lanes and safety. Irrespective of what you hear, safety is part of what the community board committee approved. Safety is there. Thank you. Call the question. Sure. Um, we already called the question. I don't know. We have took a motion. We have a discussion. So all in favor of committee's recommendation? Okay. Those opposed to the committee's recommendation? I'm opposed. Opposed. Brandon? It's two opposers. Those abstaining from the committee's recommendation? I abstain, Mr. Singletary. Okay, Mr. Jordan. Thank you. Jessica, you got the count? All right, great. Thank you, Transportation. Next item on the agenda, committees to report. <laughs> Economic Development and Employment Committee. Are, is, the, is the community not allowed to talk about this? We're not allowed to comment at all? Mm -hmm. at, not in, the, not in the executive session. No, we have an open session where we can hear from committee members. And if you want to you know, give testimony then or comments, you can, but not during the middle of a vote. That's during this meeting or that's during another meeting? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear the last part of that question. That's going to be during this meeting or during another meeting? No, no, during this meeting, there's an open forum where you can speak. Absolutely. Got it. Okay. So mm -hmm. hard. Didn't know that. Thanks. Everybody. No problem. Committees to report economic development and employment. Thank you, Mr. Singletary. Um, we had our meeting. Uh, I, pre I actually presented to the full board, so I'm not going to go over that again. Um, my co-chair, Ms. Peterson, has to step away, so she's not here right now, but I want to introduce her. Uh, over the summer, we're going to be working on a couple different uh, working groups uh, for the AMI. Uh, also, for um, we're also going to be looking at uh, also the resource fair. We're going to be doing that, and we're also going to be looking at the uh, 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 statement of district needs. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Uh, next committee to report youth education and cultural affairs. Good evening, everyone. I want to introduce my co chair, Dorothea. Um, Dorothea, are you there? She's on. I'm here. Okay, yes. Great. Yes. Uh, thank you. So we had an awesome meeting in June. We heard from the executive director and chief curator of the Museum of the Contemporary African-American Diaspora and Arts. And uh, they have uh, purchased and will be planning and implementing a year round sculpture garden that they're calling a sculpture parklet, not a park, a parklet, um, at the corner of Lafayette. And do I have somewhere else too? corner of Lafayette, right near the Brooklyn Medical Plaza. Uh, and they propose to have murals, art displays, uh, lots of programs with public engagement. Uh, the artists and residents in their museum will be programming at this parklet. Uh, they will be having um, interactive programming. And uh, the question was, well, what happens in the winter? And in the, in the fall, winter, and early spring, they'll be doing a lot of agricultural work uh, because agriculture you know, reflects the history uh, of, of the uh, African diaspora and young people will be learning uh, to grow and um, other types of agricultural skills. So we were very excited about that and we're gonna help them um, connect with some of the local schools so that our young people uh, can participate in this very exciting endeavor. And during the summer, of course, we'll be working on our statement of district need of the important matters we've discussed in committee all year. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Um, next item on the agenda is other committee business. I just have one brief comment if there are no other members from the exec committee who have anything to share. I just wanna caution the chairs and the co-chairs that as we engage with um, presenters to our committee, and it may not be applicable to every committee, 
but there are times when some committees get more requests from others, particularly if it's for um, small businesses looking to open up restaurants and they need liquor licenses or if it's things that pertain to land use. I just call as a reminder, there's a fine line between making a recommendation or a suggestion to an applicant and anything that appears to be appears to be a quick pro quo in the sense that, well, if you do this, then we'll vote that way. You cannot have your members give that illusion when an applicant is before your committee. So I ask each of you to please remind your uh, members, including your public members, that we need to ask questions that are fair and impartial. Do not try to give the air or the sense that you're leading someone down a path of doing something before you vote. Um, that's been brought to my attention. And so I wanted to share that with you. If anybody needs a refresher on how to do that, we can reach out to Burrow Hall and get copies of the new member orientation packet. Um, and so I think that's important. As a reminder, not looking to have anyone respond, it's really just more of a, as a reminder than anything else. Um, additionally, I do wanna kind of remind everyone, I'll just really highlight that we do have new board members um, that have joined community board. And one of our new board members is a, a teenage member of the committee of community board. Her name is um, Madison Chang. I'm not sure if Madison is still on, but she was on earlier. And I just wanted to acknowledge her that um, as one of our youth members, it was impressive to see her join tonight's executive committee meeting and hope that the information you received tonight is helpful. So um, that, that concludes my comments. <laughs> Thank you, Madison, for the thumbs up. Is there anybody else who has any, um, any exec committee member who has any other community business? Okay, great. Moving on to agenda item number nine, community forum. Now there was a gentleman who meant to ask if he could speak I think his name may have been Shane. I could be wrong, but if the gentleman is still on and you want to make a comment, this would be the perfect time. Thank you. you I are. appreciate that. Uh, I'm a resident yeah. in CB2. Uh, I'm part of the uh, non-car owning supermajority. Um, and I wanted to make a comment about this particular intersection. Uh, my wife and I use this bike lane multiple times a week, almost every day. Uh, believe it or not, I've had my life threatened by a driver at this very le uh, left turn lane. I was using the left turn lane as is my right uh, and had somebody uh, do what's called punish pass where they sped as close as they could to me going very fast, rolled down the window and said, I'm going to fucking kill you if you ride in the street. Uh, that didn't seem right to me. Uh, and the fact that we have a Department of Transportation that has a proposal in front of us to make sure that that very conflict doesn't happen and that we maintain the other bike lane on the other side of the street. This is, I was like, this is amazing. The DOT is actually like taking a look at this intersection and sees the problem that I encountered where somebody threatened my life just because I was riding my bicycle is gonna fix it. And so it makes me really sad um, that we have a community board that is discussing removing an existing bike lane. And um, yeah, it just makes me really sad. So. I hope people will reconsider that and we'll uh, move forward with the plan as it is. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. Anybody else have any comments or community forum? Hearing none, I'm up to agenda item number 10, motion to adjourn. Mr. Gordon, second, Mr. Second. Meyer. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? I hope <laughs> not. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Get home safe. Good night. Thank good you. Night, Thank you. Okay, see you next month. <laughs> <laughs>